So, just before we start, by a show of hands, how many agencies do we have in the room? Okay, maybe about 70 or 80 percent. So, um, it's, uh, it's quite a good, good spread to have, I suppose. From my perspective, I'm always interested to find out how other agencies grow and about what other agencies do about building their business and how they sort themselves out and set themselves out as a team. Um, we've been fortunate enough to be in a manifesto for the last four years and really experienced quite a rapid growth. Um, and so we wanted to share with you uh, some of the techniques and the tools and the processes that we have in place uh, that have really allowed us to make that happen. Um, so just to introduce both of us, uh, ourselves, uh, my name is Hugh. Um, I used to be a recruiter, please don't throw things at me. Um, I found my way into a digital agency space um, back in 2015. So I was the first um, employee at Manifesto to work exclusively in new business uh, and partnerships. And let me tell you, that was quite a big <coughs> step. Going from where you're basically reading words off of a CV um, at people and kind of judging by their confidence um, to actually having to talk the talk and walk the walk. And it was a very, very big learning curve for me. Um, I, uh, I had quite an interesting journey into agency life, um, and I think that's probably an entire presentation in itself, so um, I'll, I'll kind of leave that there. But um, for me, it was a really, really exciting opportunity to join an agency um, that was small, growing. Uh, I believed in it. Um, they were one of my first clients as a recruiter. And, and for me, I, I really bought into the vision of the founders and what they were trying to achieve. Um, so yeah, as I say, I've been here since um, 2015, um, heading up new business and partnerships. Um, and uh, the agency was probably about 12 people when we started. Um, Gabby joined not too short after. Mm -hmm. Me. This is my surname, Alex, by the way, so you can take a screenshot. <laughs> uh, pretty much everyone called me uh, or Gabby or Gambri. I'm Gambri pretty much everywhere on Twitter on Twitter and or maybe any other sort of network. Um, I've been working for Manifesto as, as Hugh for the past four years. I'm a former, former nerd, I used to be a nerd, now I do this kind of talk, so I have to scale up and talk, which is scary for me. And I've been working for, with Drupal and PHP for about 10, 15 years. I've been using Drupal since the register group was owned by default, which was a really scary uh, uh, word by, uh, at least when we moved to, we know. Um, that's it, that's it, cool. Um, so, we both work for Manifesto. Um, we describe ourselves as an agency of strategists, creatives, and technologists who work with awesome op uh, organizations to change things for the better. And that's something that we really, truly believe in. Um, just to give a little bit of context about who, uh, kind of where we are and, and kind of why we're talking about where we've come from. So we won our first Drupal project back in 2014, 2015. That's, this was actually off the back of starting to partner with um, Acquia. So Acquia came to us with an opportunity um, and uh, we tagged along with them, and that really allowed us to kind of dip our toes into the Drupal space. We actually went through a selection process ourselves internally to look at what sort of technology we wanted to work with, and, and Acquia and Drupal was uh, the one that shone through. Um, now, there was only about 12 of us. We had a really short, short, small studio, actually just around the corner in Clerkenwell of um, Exmouth Market. Um, and uh, just to kind of give some context as to where we've come now, so we've got 20 consultants, um, in, in kind of specializing in Drupal. So Manifesto as a whole is now 80 people. Um, Drupal development accounts for 20% of our annual turnover. Roughly last year, um, I'd say about 50 opportunities came to us um, in the Drupal space, and we had about six major wins out of that. And some people in, in kind of agency land may question those figures and think, hmm, Drupal development as 20% annual turnover seems quite small and potentially the same as those major wins, but there are reasons and, and I'll come on to that in a second. And 2018 itself was quite a big reason for us for a number of other reasons. So we won our first Engage Award with Acquia. Um, we floated on AIM um, as a founding member of a group of organizations called the Panoply. Um, that's quite a big deal. We've got to go to um, the Stock Exchange um, and, uh, and sign the piece of paper that they give you. And uh, it was a really, really good day out. Uh, some of you may be familiar with um, Deason, so um, Deason uh, joined the Manifesto family um, and we're all uh, now happily playing together over in, in our studio in, in Shoreditch. Um, and we won a uh, Development Team of the Year Award, so it was a big year, 2018, and, and uh, looking forward to seeing what 2019 brings. 
So I'm aware that we're kind of the ones standing between you and lunch, uh, mm. and we thought, mm. what better uh, than to take a bit of a, a culinary to route prepare, forward. Yeah. To prepare people to a nice meal. So um, today we are going to uh, cook something together. <laughs> so we're going to show for, from our point of view what the ingredients are to make a nice uh, tubal agency. When you do your pitches, when you present your product, when you do your, your thing that you do with clients or with friends or with, with um, uh, colleagues, you prepare something, you serve something, and we see this as a full meal. So today we're going to present to you our four courses meal. The first one is going to be, uh, the first section is going to be the starters, the antipasti. I'm, I'm from Italy, by the way, so, you know, I'm really, uh, I, I, can I say confident about food? Yeah, I'm going to say confident. I'm <laughs> really confident about food, so the first one will be starters. What starters are in your meal? The starters, they, it's like the beginning of your food. It's not the main course. It's like prepare your, your tongue and your mouth and your throat and your body <coughs> for what is going to come. Normally, it's not related to your main deal, your main uh, course, but it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's a good base for what's going to come. And then the primo, <coughs> primo piatto, so it's the main course, which is what you sell. So this is, if it's wrong, your meal is, is wasted, it's, it's gone. So this is like, <coughs> it's like your, your, um, uh, your winner, your champion is what makes you different from the other ones. Your secondo, the second course, this is really uh, popular in Italy, and what it is, is like, is, uh, is to complete your serving. Normally you have pasta as a primo, which is carbs, so the secondo is normally protein, like meat or fish, like, so it's not, it's not what you sell, it's not the main champion, but it's something that must be there to like, complete your meal, to people leading and saying, well, that was amazing. The last one is the dessert. So it's been scientifically proved that even if a person is completely full, there is always space for a dessert, or something <laughs> sweet, or something small. This is, this is not me saying, it's, it's true. Uh, so what the dessert is, is after a wonderful meal, after a wonderful <coughs> lunch, the dessert is like the fireworks at the end of the party, so it's something you say, it's not important, it's not required, that people can skip it, it's not, you know, but if it's there, it makes you really special. And I think that's it. So can we start cooking? I think so, Gabs. So <laughs> <laughs> I was a little bit unimpressed at having to be made to wear these, but I think we can oh. probably pull it off. Sorry, this is <laughs> you need it <laughs> for hygiene and, <laughs> and security. Right, okay. Okay. Do you have to do it? I, I, I would hope so. <laughs> We go. Ready? Shall we cook? I, I think we're ready. So, as, uh, as Gaps described, the antipasti sets up a good foundation for the meal. Um, I mentioned when I joined Manifesto, one of the key things for me was about joining a company who really, really had values. Um, Manifesto was formed on the basis of values. So our three co-founders got together, um, created a real manifesto, it's a 12-point document. Um, that describes the way that we want to work and the, what we want to give back to the world. And so um, that kind of stuck with it, but we realized very quickly as we grew that this isn't something that was owned and shared by the team. And really to, in, to enforce and to kind of push forward your values as an organization, you really need to make sure that these are, these are driven forward by the team. So little story, about three years ago, we got together um, in a, uh, a small space in Shoreditch, where else, um, and we played with Lego for a day. Um, some people may have heard of a facilitation technique called Lego Serious Play. Um, it is serious play, but it's also a lot of fun. And effectively, we sat down for a day and we started making models of what we felt our, our values really stood for. Um, if, you, if you don't know Lego Serious, Lego serious Game, uh, read about it. And, and if there are any coach that close to your, your area, your city, please get in touch with them it's, because it's really powerful too to uh, encourage or to, you know, to increase the value or, or anything that you want to uh, come up from your teams and your company. Yeah, absolutely. And I think what that did is that set the foundations for who we are. And so when we were working through these, um, we, we kind of started with, with the first one. For us, we were a collaborative agency. So internally for us, this means collaborating on a shared vision for who we are, 
um, overcoming problems and successes together. And actually, what we do every single year, three times, four times a year, in fact, is work together on our OKRs and understand about where's the business going. This isn't driven from the very top. It's guided and, and as was mentioned in the free, previous um, previous talk, coached. It's it's kind of guided, but actually we all come together with the vision of what that means to us. Externally, that means working with clients in, in kind of however way they see fit. So we're, we're predominantly an agile agency, but we also recognize that organizations can't always be agile, and so being able to flex and, and create bespoke approaches is, is really, really important to us. And so one of the ways that we will do that is um, working with organizations to create a shared strategic um, roadmap at the very beginning of a relationship so that we know where we're trying to get to together. Um, the second one, and I'll let Gabs cover a little bit more about what we do internally, but in our contract, baked into that, we've got 10% of time um, dedicated to uh, non-billable activity. So I myself was on a training course for the last couple of days, um, learning more about line management, and it was really interesting to see how much of uh, the concepts that were brought out in the last talk actually were covered off in, in the last couple of sessions. Um, but what that 10% time also means for us is that we get to work on internal hacks and, and come up with new ideas, uh, we've got a community of practice that Gabby leads from a, a Drupal perspective, and we get to come to events and do a lot around events. Um, and externally, what this means is that we can actually go to clients and almost create our own brief. So uh, one of the things that we uh, worked on last year was uh, created a concept campaign for uh, Parkinson's UK. Uh, they wanted to uh, commemorate the 125th anniversary of discovering Parkinson's. And so we went away, locked ourselves away for a couple of days, and came up with an idea around personalised a uh, video that we ended up uh, delivering on Drupal 8, um, and that one won an Acro Engage Award. But actually, we wouldn't have had that project had we not all sat there in a room and come up with the idea in the first place, because the reason Parkinson's decided that they wanted to go ahead with it was because we came to them with a great idea, and actually gave it to them uh, for free, apart from the implementation costs. Um, thirdly, um, it's really important to us that we're consistently delivering excellence. One of the ways that we do this is that we have um, our leadership team involved in absolutely every single project. Uh, we love shouting about the work that we do. I've already mentioned a couple of projects now, so that's hopefully plain to see. But externally what this means is delivering on some hero projects with organisations. Um, so delivering projects that they can be proud about. And then in using that network of people who are proud to help us shout about who Manifesto are and get our name out there and further afield. And what that also means is um, co-owning this success with clients and upskilling those teams as we go. So we'll spend a lot of time working with um, people who are working for that organisation, making sure that they have the tools to be able to, to progress once we've left and once we've finished what we're doing. And then finally, and this is probably the, one of the most important ones for us, we're, 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 we're agents of change. We love change, we love developing new ideas and coming up with new things. Um, and we are an agile agency at our heart, we, we, we do our pension in an agile way, we've got our board meetings, they're running in an agile way. Everything that we do is agile, but what this does is this gives us internally a really strong sense of purpose. Um, as uh, head of new business at Manifesto, I'm regularly seeing a lot of different things coming in. Um, and the amount of times where someone will raise their hand and say, that doesn't sound like a project where we're changing things for the better, that sounds like a project that we don't want to be involved with. And so we'll regularly turn down work that conflicts with our values. Um, and so externally for us, this is about working with organizations who create positive change in the world um, and changing things for the better. So the primo. This is uh, more of the, the sales and marketing side, the partnership <coughs> side. Um, some people have very different ways of doing sales and marketing. I know that um, some organizations don't even have a dedicated new business function, and, and this is all run by the team. Um, but just to give you a bit of an idea about some of the things that we do and, um, and kind of how this uh, manifests itself for us um, and how this has helped us grow. Um, so we collaborate with partners. Um, we won our first project with Acquia back in 2014, 2015, and for us, this has really been instrumental. When I started at Manifesto, um, it was very much a kind of one email here, one email there with, with Acquia. And I think what we very quickly found as we progressed with this relationship is that you get out what you put in. And so we started focusing a lot more on that relationship and looking at how we could give back to them and they could give back, give back to us. And since then, we've been doing a lot of co-events, a lot of co-marketing. Um, and a lot of co-selling, and the last couple, last six months alone, I think we've won uh, two very large projects in excess of, of 200, 300K. So for us, that's a really, really big draw of, of, of new work, um, and I can't stress enough how it is exactly. You get out what you put in in those sorts of, those sorts of situations, and we see that across the rest of the organization as well. 
Um, making friendships that last. So um, I talked about how we want to share in that success of our clients. Uh, this is a picture of um, a very, very hazy picture of uh, an inter, inter charity softball tournament where we became basically the training partner for UNICEF. We became the, uh, uh, the bashing horse. And uh, they, uh, they, they so, so, so we, know, we know them very well. Um, they are uh, some very good friends of ours and uh, we uh, work very closely with them. And we work with them on a lot of different services and a lot of different products. And um, I think one of the key takeaways from, from these guys is that actually, uh, a lot of their, their kind of senior team will go out there and will shout about the manifesto name. And for us, that's really, really important to make sure that we're delivering the best sort of work to them so that they can go out and talk about how good we are. Um, and ultimately, that means that uh, hand on heart in the last four years, having a very, very dedicated kind of friendship-based approach with organizations, I've maybe done 10 cold calls um, in the entire time that I've been at manifesto. So um, it puts me in quite a nice, comfortable position as well. Um, we expanded on what we, what we offered. So we initially were a very technical focused agency. Um, we uh, had a team of probably eight um, techies and, and, and four kind of in and around design and project management. And we recognized that in order to be able to grow, we needed to be able to expand on the services that we offered to um, our clients. This, um, this kind of faded image in the back is actually a bit of a timeline of, of where we've come from. Shortly after I joined, um, we grew to about 20 and we found that it was quite difficult to grow any further and I think everyone can probably nod their head in, in, in acknowledgement that going through those specific periods of growth were incredibly difficult. We found um, another agency who were, who were happy and wanting and willing to join Manifesto who brought with them a, a, an incredible user experience and creative team that really allowed us to propel ourselves through that 20, 20 person sort of black hole and grow a lot quicker and a lot faster. Um, and that took us up to 30 people that added a whole new depth of skills, a whole new depth of products that really allowed us to, to strengthen those relationships that we already had. Um, and so I kind of fast forward now, we've, we've uh, obviously um, brought Decent on board and that's allowed us to go through that 50 person all the way up to 75, 80. So it's really, really exciting times for us. Um, this is one that I can't stress enough and this is bringing back to the kind of the 50 leads coming in to Manifesto. So, um, on the bottom right, you probably can't see all of the numbers, but the top amount of numbers there is 105 hours that we spent on a fairly recent new business pitch. Um, so we qualify really, really hard. Um, and for us, uh, that basically means turning down projects even when we think that they might be quite good fun. Uh, it's about making sure that the project is right for the agency and it's not going to put any undue stress on a team and create inefficiencies. Um, and so just to give a bit of a snapshot, so we won't, we won't look at a project that's much below 100K, we won't look at a project that's outside of our core area of expertise, we won't look at a project that um, we think is kind of ethically diverse, and we won't look at a project where there is no budget stipulated. So we're really, really hard on the way that we qualify, and ultimately that means that we have quite a high win rate on the work that we do do. And then I suppose the last one is around using events to create a network. So we work a lot in the not-for-profit space, um, we have a series of events where we have regularly people coming in um, and giving thought leadership on and around the not-for-profit space. Um, and what that's enabled us to do is to create a, a vast amount of people who are happy to talk about the work that we do and who we are. Um, and uh, this event that's kind of in the background, is, which you can't see unfortunately, is, is a manifesto pub quiz that we do. Um, once a year we get 16 of the, the, kind of the biggest charities in the UK to come along. Um, and it's uh, a hell of a lot of fun with a lot of booze. <laughs> and uh, and that's, that's that, I suppose, from a sales and marketing perspective. Is it me? It is you. Take it, please. You can have it, take yeah. <laughs> So, um, you have seen the starters and the primo, uh, the Hugo's playing, explain from the manifesto point of view, because this is what you actually said. Now we're going to move about to the second and to the third which is probably something that I can share more with you because you can really personalize because this is what you said, it's a completion of, competition of, of, of your meal. Um, so, if, I mean, if you are an organization that is selling products on top of a product and this product is open source, the best thing that can complete your package is if, the, if you embrace the community of this product you are part of the community, so it's not just, you know, I'm not just a consumer, I'm a main actor in, in, the, in, the, in the product set, in the ecosystem of, the, uh, of what I'm offering. 
and is it too far away? Yeah. Okay, yeah, let's walk. Um, I'll show you three ingredients, three and a half really. Uh, what I believe is really uh, the way of completing your, your offering, of your serving, and then so embracing the community. The first one is uh, <coughs> events. The fact that you're all here at Drupal events is a good, um, it's a good step in the right direction. Uh, what you should do, what we should do as organizations, as a companies, is encouraging our employees, encouraging our colleagues to attend events. If there are no events to organize once, organize events. Um, um, if there are already some sponsored events, I mean, if no one can come, or you're from the other side of the world, thinking about sponsoring events, this is really important because you can create friendships, you can you create um, uh, networks. Um, one example that we did is two years ago, every, every year, I don't know if you know, if you don't, you know now, and then you have to attend next time. Every year at the end of January, the last weekend of January, is a Drupal global event called Drupal uh, Global Contribution Weekend, where uh, across the whole globe, People, communities, teams, uh, remotely or physically, they meet and they contribute back to Drupal. Um, so a couple of years ago, uh, there was no uh, um, uh, global contribution weekend happening in London, which is a big community. A lot of big Drupal contributors that work in London, they work in the UK, but there was no event. So from Manifesto, we said, let's make one, right? So we just give you know the venue and we give. Uh, we give a bit of food and, and then we see what happens and it's becoming really popular. So if there is an event, attend. If there isn't any, create one. If there is a, is a gap in the, in the space of the knowledge or the events or the community, uh, step in and do your, your job. This is really important. It's a fundamental ingredient. Uh, it's probably the first ingredient. It's the easiest one. You know, attend the event. It's, it's costless. You just go there and that's it. One more is probably contributing back to the project, to Drupal, to PHP, to, to WordPress, to whatever you, you are selling. Contributing back is really important. Um, uh, for the Drupal point of view, how you contribute, there are four probably main ways you can contribute. Is you can contribute to the code, to writing documentation, to writing translations, or just to help the community tools. And it's really easy. I mean, Drupal, the, 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 the Drupal.com website has a lot of um, uh, starting points where you can start to contribute. The community itself is really uh, friendly with new contributors. So uh, what you should do, you, your agency, your colleagues, your friends, um, try to push, try to encourage, try to inspire people to go back and contribute because it's really important. And I'll show you why. So the first thing is is attending events. It's costless. The second one is contributing, probably a bit more costy because you need the time to sit down and do it. So in your week, <coughs> you know, we have the 10% of our time where we use for curiosity. The, there was the, the presentation before was, um, I think Michael or Michael, uh, curiosity, curiosity creates. So give time for, to your people, to your colleagues, to your employees to expand their curiosity. Right, we have our 10%. Other people they use the idle time in between projects. Uh, other companies they have uh, departments like labs where people in that department just just do you know just they have time to do to do something else. So this is really important. I'll show you why. The fourth ingredient is don't hire developers. I mean, you need to hire developers, but then train them to be kind mentors which is really important. If you hire a developer just to be a machine that consume tasks, then at some point, he or she, they're gonna leave. If you build mentors, right, so the mood, the, 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 the way you're working of the agency of the company of the organization is, you know, they, they it's not just simple <coughs> training, they help me to become a better person, a better developer. So, don't just hire developers. Think about doing a more advanced kind of training. And the community really helps a lot. There are a lot of tools that, you, that they can help you or, or your colleagues or your employees to become mentors. There, is, there are monthly meetups. There is a channel dedicated on the Slack channel Drupal. There are a lot of pages inside the, um, uh, 
the Drupal.org website and mainly on the big conferences, events that you should attend. Um, there are um, normally the Fridays dedicated to the uh, full day sprint and there is a session <coughs> with mentors that help you becoming a mentor. Uh, mentors itself, they learn more by other people joining and sharing the knowledge. So we have the three ingredients, which is attending events, contributing and, and mentors. And the question now is, that's fine, I mean, you know, it's brilliant, but then I come back to my office and a child say, you know, it's, I need billable time and you can't leave and then I need a reason for you to go to the event, I need a reason for you to spend time on contributing rather than finishing the project. And these are just five examples that uh, we, we do a manifesto, but they, you can apply yourself in your project. The first reason why this makes you a better organization, the reason why this you complete your serving for your meal, because you're still cooking, is the code quality uh, increase. I didn't mention the uh, manifesto, I'm Drupal PHP um, uh, practice leader. That means that I take care of the practice of the code, that it's clean, that it's secure, from what is correct. Um, and it's really important in this attitude to, to uh, uh, the way you compare what is good and what is not good. We, 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 we do our contribution, we kind of train our mentors, so we understand what the community is saying around. So instead of fixing, when we have a problem on our patch, what we call quality the fix upstream method is, probably, probably you do already, but I'm gonna, this is how I call it. Um, when we have a problem with our code, we have a problem with Drupal or with copy modules, instead of fixing or trying workarounds, if the problem is in the core or in the module, we fix it upstream. We create an issue on Drupal.org, we fix the, the problem, we're going to fix it anyway, locally. So why don't we share our fix with the community so our client will be happy because the website is fixed, our department will be happy because there is no additional time that you spend, sorry, our HR or our um, um, project manager because there is no additional time. The same thing you have to do locally, you push it upstream with a patch on Drupal.org and the whole community will be happy because everyone is going gonna, is gonna, to uh, benefit from your change. So it's really important, this one. Uh, a lot of time in the manifesto, there is a problem with this content module. It's really small, but this, this other module that does fix the problem. The first one is really popular. The second one is just new. It's a dev release or beta release. It's not even, you know, it's really popular. Why don't we fix the first one instead of creating redundant uh, uh, code or duplicated code? <coughs> the second part is, uh, the second uh, uh, reason why it makes you a better organization is um, much better practices. If you do your code locally in your own space, you will never understand how the why the world is, how other people do stuff, what the be best practices are, how the code quality should be measured against what index. So by attending events, uh, 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 contributing and becoming a mentor. You understand what the community is pushing you to do, so you become a better developer. And then, I don't know if you know, you probably know, if you don't, I'm telling you now, there's a crediting system on the Drupal.co website. So the more you contribute, and from this, well, last year, because it's 2018, now, even if you attend an event, or you speak an event, Alex Barron, you can get credits on the Drupal.com website. The credits <coughs> give you a high rank on the marketplace. So we go one or two deal in the least three last year. Yeah, three last year where they found us on the Drupal.com website. So when someone says, um, well, most of you are a CEO or a CTO or CXO of the company. So for the employees, when 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 you are going to ask the employee, so why spending time on contributing rather than doing the project is good. They can say because we're going to go up on the ranking on the Drupal.org page, so we're going to get more lead, or we're going to get more um, exposure to to the market. The last two points, which are really important, is um, by attending events, by doing contribution, and by becoming mentors. Um, what you see, the oven uh, just just is burning the food. <laughs> um, so what, what is really important is that you can become a mentor in, in your own. You can spend 10, 15 years of becoming a master of Drupal. But if you use the community as a, as a, a, a trainer and as a dojo at the same time, then you will speed up the, your path, your journey to become a mentor. So you can really become a mentor in what, two or three years by the help of the tool, Drupal.org and the community. 
And when you have mentors inside your company, the mentor is like a seed, it's a seed that you have in your company, you put in your soil, you moist it a bit, and by itself it's gonna grow, it's gonna expand, it's gonna become more tree, apple tree. So by having a single mentor inside the, 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 your company makes you a much better company, and uh, you have, have much better visibility on the Drupal space, market, and community, as well as you will see more mentors coming soon. So this is the second, okay, I explained the second. So we have our full meal, the beginning and the start, the uh, diversity are the values from the manifesto point of view at least. <coughs> uh, the main, um, I will explain what our primo, our main is. Then is secondo, and then our meal is complete. Now what can be more than this? So what is the dessert? Why, why uh, uh, in a pitch, the, the organization will see the fireworks at the end of the pitch? So my point of view is, um, is investing in innovation. So we can be a great <coughs> agency, a great PHP developers or WordPress developers. But then, if we don't stay up to speed with the progress of the technology, then soon we will be updated or we'll be late when other people are going uh, uh, um, ahead of you. Um, so what I do suggest is a lot of time for explos uh, exploring uh, the, the, the curiosity. As, as you said, curiosity is creates, it's really important. So even if it's a small issue like, you know, Vagrant doesn't work anymore and I heard about Docker somewhere. Can I spend time on, on playing with Docker? If you say no, then I'm gonna start with a tool which is five or 10 years old forever, unless someone's gonna say, okay, now it's time, now we're too late, now we have to do it. No, do it now, give up 10% of the time, a couple of hours a day, whatever you want, go ahead. Um, encourage your team on going over the comfort zone. So I'm gonna tell you a secret, okay? Uh, probably gonna deal with developers. Developers, they are lazy. They don't want to change uh, because it's scary, you know, there is the, the, the wonderful rule, if it works, don't touch it. Which is, is true, please, if it works, don't touch it. But uh, <laughs> you have to encourage, you have to inspire people to, to go over the comfort zone. If you see that you can do the search with the Drupal internal search, but then you never work with the solar, right? Or, or elastic search, try it. Give one day to your developers to say, you know what, let's go ahead and let's try something new. It doesn't mean if you're gonna waste time. We will, you will never waste time. You will learn a lot. Even if the, the end is a, it's a complete failure, you learn how to fail, and then you won't fail anymore, at least. And then, most important is, I mean, I don't think this happened in the Drupal community, but, but uh, um, it's really important to remove the um, um, not invented here uh, um, way of thinking. So we do our own stuff, right, because I don't trust the module. The module is in the beta version. It's that version. There is no stable version. So I'm going to rewrite the wheel on my own. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Move to um, proudly found that somewhere. This is what Drupal is doing. Before Drupal was doing it, everything internally. Now with Drupal 8, we're using more and more and more packages from the Symfony framework, from library, from, from other developers. So try to think in this way. Don't be a producer anymore. Be a producer as well as a consumer of other people's libraries. And then it's even more important is when you, when you do this innovation, when you find new ways of doing stuff, when you improve things, <coughs> share with other people, publish things, open source your project, don't leave it inside, they are great. Even if they're awful, someone else is gonna fix them for you. They may be useful for someone. So when you build it internally, don't leave it inside expose it to the community, and then this is brilliant. Um, what we did is, uh, this is the last 12 months of manifesto that we spend on our innovation time. So this is not billable projects. This is something that we did for free for the community. But that's what we did. Uh, how long? Uh, stop me, stop me, I'm talking too much. <laughs> Checkbox API. So we had a, a website, the website is doing events, and then they were finding, they were looking, Last year, they were looking for new channels to uh, how to share their events. And they said, look, why don't we do a chatbot? And then um, there was an Amazon Alexa, I think it was two years ago probably. There was an Amazon Alexa round, and we did this two-part connection with Amazon Alexa. And then they said, um, 
and then they said, Google Assistant went out. And they said, oh yeah, but now that it's Google Assistant, can we do Google Assistant? And then we have to revise everything on Google Assistant. And then they said, can, if, you know, can we do on Facebook Messenger? And we said, but Alexa and Facebook Messenger, they, you know, they have different devices. And they said, but you com it's a conversational interface. This is a microphone and speaker. This is the web interface. But you converse and they reply. So why, why can't you do it? And we said, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the only point. And that's what we've been checked for the API, which is what it is, is, is a layer where um, it lets you expose your content from the Drupal side to all of these conversational devices. Again, it's an API, it doesn't do anything by itself. You need to write your, your logic. But by having a single country module in Drupal, you can expose all your content across all the devices in the same way. So you can have with one single um, piece of code, your website talking with Google Assistant, with uh, Amazon the next one, we Facebook Messenger, we Skype, we whatever has a connection. Encryption. So we have a client saying, you know, we have to this is this will be interesting. So we, we had to um, we have web forms. We we people they send personal data on our website and uh, we need the data to be encrypted and there is a wonderful module for Drupal it's called encryption. But if you don't know, I mean I've done this kind of presentation before, if you don't know what encryption is um, is a single encryption, so the same key can encrypt and decrypt, right? So your database data is encrypted, <coughs> and data that, that is encrypted, um, but the key lives in Drupal, the key lives in the running instance. So if an attacker can run Drupal code, they can decrypt your data. So if Drupal can decrypt your data, everyone can decrypt your data. So as soon as you have a, a, a security, uh, um, um, What's the name called? I don't know what's called in the name of the security. If they can run root PHP code, then they can see your data. But we came up with this model. This was complete innovation. It wasn't a bit of a project. It was an, an experiment that we did, and it was brilliant. And then this is basically you encrypt your data in the database, and then the only owner of the private key, so the public key encrypt, the only problem of the private key, the only owner of the private key can encrypt the data, and the private key is, is, is kept um, uh, safely somewhere else, not in the running Drupal instance. Uh, quickly, Backstop and JS, Pattern Lab, this is an investigation that we did, you may know Pattern Lab, Backstop JS is a visual integration tool, but it is, and now we're using this as a, pro a product. Impossible software is a uh, um, personalized video software that Hugh mentioned, and we did integration with Facebook Messenger for UNICEF. Completely for free, we have worked with these, we did work with these, we never worked together, so you know, let's do it. And now it's brilliant. And to be honest with you, we can show this, even if it's just uh, um, this oven, we have to fix it. It's not, it's not working. Um, <laughs> we can show the pitches. And short and again, these three are country models that we built for our innovation. Now they are in the Google.org space. You can go and download them. Short end is a, is a platform, and then we did integration for that. And then now we have a good relationship with the short end guys. Uh, company and then we did a bit of experiment with augmented reality and virtual reality. Everything was our innovation, and uh, this is really what the dessert is, right? This is not your work. This is not what your company is. But if you present these when you serve your meal to pitches, then this is the fireworks, and this is this is really what is gonna basically why you're gonna win. And uh, that's it. Yes, <laughs>